so next question, find the value that is 20% on the way from 4.2 to 6.9. Now this kind of question, this kind of problem is uh, called linear interpolation. We've got two values and we want to find some value that is intermediate between them, taking into account these relative values and the relative position that we're trying to find. Uh, and you, you use this for blending between two different things at different proportions, and it's it's used all over the place in, in animation, in rendering triangles, in, um, I don't know, in user interfaces, in approximating functions, anything. So, you really should, you really want to have this concept solidly understood. So how are we going to do this? Well, um, what we're going to do is we're going to redefine what our uh, our axes mean here. So X and Y, we're going to say, okay, Y is going to be the output value. It's going to be the 4.2 or the 6.9 or whatever is in between. Y is the output. So we know that at uh, X is going to be what we call our alpha, our controlling value. Uh, and it's going to range generally from uh, 0 to 1. So at 0, the output should be, yeah, what was it? 4.2, right? So 4.2 is going to be, you know, somewhere around here-ish, I guess. And at 1, the output is going to be 6.9. All right, and at the very middle, at 0 0.5, we want it to be halfway between these two. So it's going to be basically the average, which is going to be somewhere around here, because I believe, well, let's just do this, 4.2 plus 6.9 So one here, 11.1 .1 divided by 2 is equal to 5, and that's going to be point. Uh, five, five point five, five, I guess. Yeah, it seems all right. So about five point six, five point six somewhere around here, and that looks just about on the line. That's the halfway point. And if you wanted to go one quarter, that would be here, and it would also be on the line. So what we're really doing is we want to set up an equation here. A linear equation, a line that connects these two points, and then we can just plug in any values into that equation, and we can get the uh, the desired interpolated result. So what we want to do here is, well, I mean, the equation is just going to be the rise, which is 6.9 minus 4.2 over the run, which is 1. And that's just going to be, what's that going to be? 2.7. So 2.7x plus the, uh, the y-intercept, which is going to be 4.2. Because when x is 0, the result is 4.2. And there you go. You have your equation for linear interpolation. And then if we... Substitute in here, 0 0.2, which is 20%, plus 4.2, we will get the result, which is apparently 4.74, and there you go. Uh, so that's basically the concept of linear interpolation. You've got two data points, you create a line equation from those, and then you can then take values that are in between, x values in between those two points, and you can find interpolations of those two data points, those two values. And if you notice here, the, uh, the calculation of the slope, it's always going to divide by 1. So the slope is always going to be uh, data point, the value 2 minus value 1. So this result times x plus value 1. So you can rewrite that as v2 minus v1 times alpha plus v1. And that's your basic linear interpolation from V1 to V2. So when alpha is 1, you're going to get all V2. And when alpha is 0, 
you're going to get all V1, because 0 times this cancels out, you just get V1. So, there you go. There's your linear interpolation. Now, the next question is very similar, only instead of interpolating between two values, now we're interpolating between two points. And you might be tempted to try to approach this a different way. Uh, 6, 9, 4, 20. So what you might be, you might try to start off doing, you might plot one point at 6, 9, and then another one at 4, 20, which is going to be, you know, like way up here, and then, you know, draw this line, and you're like, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. But that's not really what you should be doing, right? Because, so when you're interpolating from 6, 9 to 4, 20, what you're really doing is you're doing two separate interpolations. You're doing one interpolation in the x from 6 to 4, and you're doing another interpolation in the y from 9 to 20. That's what you're doing. So you want to just apply the exact same technique that you used before, but apply it creating two different equations, one for the x, one for the y. So your x is going to be, uh, well, let's see, you're, you're going from 6 to 4, so that's 4 minus 6, which is negative 2, we'll just call it uh, alpha, plus 6, right, because 6 is your start. And here, you're going to go from 9 to 20, so that's 11 alpha, uh, plus 9. So this gives uh, this gives you your equation for x and y. And then any alpha that you plug in, you apply it equally to both of these. So we want to go for, uh, what is it? 69%, I believe it was, right? Yeah, 69%. All right. So to do that, you're just going to plug in 0 0.69 into both of these alphas. And when you calculate that out, you get 4.62, 16.59. So th this is the point that is 69% of the way from 69 to 420. Beautiful. Now, if we graph that idea out, maybe it'll make a little more sense to you guys. So let me give you a, a little different demonstration of that idea. So it's hard to see because, again, I chose some values that kind of give me some steep-ass slopes and big values. But if you look here, the two equations, here's the one for the x. Right? This gives us our interpolation for the x. This gives us our interpolation for the y, and this is just x equals zero. So if we look at the intersection between uh, this vertical line and our two lines here, we can see what values we get as we slide our alpha. So here alpha is equal to zero, and as we move it up to one, here we get uh, 20, right? Value 20 for y, and sh down here we should get 4, right? 4 for x. And if we slide it down to 0, if we j eh, here it is, we get, well, it's just going to be right here, so it's going to be, yeah, it doesn't show up. It's going to be the, the y-intercept, which is 9, and the y-intercept of this guy, which is 6. 6, 9 to 4, 20. Uh, and you can imagine this the whole, uh, this vertical line here as the alpha that is controlling what values we get. Maybe if I show, if, maybe if I graph the next problem on here, it'll look simpler. All right, now for the next question here, uh, it's the same idea as the previous one, except now, instead of having two values that we interpolate independently, uh, or we interpolate them uh, in line with the same alpha, we're now creating three linear equations and interpolating them all with the same alpha. So you do the same idea here, and maybe this would make a little sense if I uh, graphed it on Desmos more than the last one. So our range of values is going to be from 0 to 255 because it's colors, and our alpha is going to be from 0 to 1. So what I want to do on Desmos here is I'll set the x-axis to go from negative 0.5 to positive 1.5. So our working range is going to be from here to here. And I'll set the y-axis from negative 50 to positive 300. And our working range is going to be from here to here. So now we should be getting graphs that we can actually look at and get some information out of. All right. So we're going to take these values here and transform them into equations using our stuff. 
So the first one, let me just drag my window off here to the other monitor so I can look at it. So we're going from 42 to 200. So that's 200 minus 42 x plus 42. So this is going to be our red, which is orange. Don't worry about it. I don't think I can change the color. Can I change the color? I don't think so. If there's a way to change the color, I don't know how to do it. Just move on. Next one. We're going to be moving from 230 to 60. So that's 60 minus 230x plus 60. There is... It doesn't seem right. Mm, plus 230? Yeah. Now you're thinking chili. That looks better. And the last one is going to be going from 156 to 200. So that is 200. We need that. 200 minus 156 x plus 156. All right. So this looks good. So these are our three equations for our red, green, blue. Uh, now let's put our uh, alpha controller in here. So x is equal to zero. And what we can do here is by sliding this alpha, we can see how the different values of red, green, and blue change. So at zero, we're going to get our original values, which are going to be 42, 230, and 156. And if we go to 0.5, and then we can see here that we get uh, whatever values we get here. I don't know what I don't know what the values are. Where's my Where's my red? Red is orange, which is going to be 121. Green is going to be 145, and blue is going to be 178. That's halfway between the two colors that we're blending. And if we go all the way to the other color, we get. Uh, let me select this. We get 60 and 200, 200 which is, if you look at the original question, that's what you get. So this is a visualization of the linear interpolation of uh, three dimension, two three-dimensional uh, values, two three-dimensional vectors. That's how it looks. Pretty cool, I think. Maybe not, I don't know. Next question. All right, finally, the final question. And this one is also a linear interpolation, but it's a little bit of a word problem little bit of a practical situation here, how you might apply this in a real program. So what we have got here is we've got a UI slider. You know, you all know what these things look like, right? I don't have to show you a slider. And it controls uh, some value that has a range from 5 to 100. And the slider has a position on the screen that can range from 223 to 273. So how do we do this? Well, it's, it's quite simple. I mean, it's the same idea. So uh, the output value that we're controlling is from 5 to 100. Now the difference is before we were choosing our alpha to be between 0 and 1. But here our alpha is kind of given to us as going to be 223 to 273. So we need to work with that to create a, uh, a function that can take this range of alpha and output this range of uh, strength. So what we do is we calculate again, we calculate the slope, which is just going to be the rise, 100 minus 5 over the run, 273 minus 223. So the run is 50, the rise is 95. So the rise, again, is 100 minus 5, which is 95. And the run was, I believe, 50. So that is our slope times x. Plus b is equal to our uh, strength. Now, normally B would just be your start value 5, but that's if your alpha is ranging from 0 to 1. But our alpha isn't starting at 0, so that means that we can't just automatically take 5 and plug it in here. So what is, what is the B? Well, all we gotta do is plug one point on the line into here and solve for that. So we know that, um, let's see here. So at 95, 50, when we are at 223, the strength is 5. So let's take that. 223 plus B 
is equal to 5. And then we just subtract 5 and subtract B. No, we can subtract this stuff from both sides. And we get B is equal to 5 minus 95 over 50 times 223, which is equal to negative 418.7. So, negative 418.7, we plug that into B, we get our final equation, just get a different color for that, which is going to be 95 over 50 x, and that's not supposed, there's still not supposed to be a negative in there, x minus 4187. So there's your equation that will get you your strength given the x value of your slider. Now the damage value for an attack is calculated as 3 halves strength plus 10. So find the function that computes the damage value given the slider position. And this too is quite simple. So it's 3 halves plus 10, right? I believe. 3 over 2 strength plus 10. And strength is equal to this. So all you gotta do is plug this into here. And you would get 3 over 2 95 over 50 x minus 418 whatever plus 10 and then you would you know you would reduce this and clean it up and you would get something times x plus something I'm not gonna work it out because you know what I'm done I'm done with this math too much math it was much longer than I thought it was gonna be but anyways uh, it was also a good little review, and uh, hopefully looking through this stuff you guys can maybe get a better idea of where you stand in your math and, you know, how much you think you might need to uh, work on this stuff on the side, or if, you, if you've gone through this and you found it all pretty easy, then uh, you, you got a pretty solid uh, grounding, I would think, in this linear kind of math stuff. A little bit of geometry thrown in there for fun. But yeah, that's where I'm going to end this video. And as usual, if you have any questions, anything, you can hit me up on the Discord. Simple question. Put that in the, the comments, and I will get back to you. There's always the forum for uh, long, longer discussions if you like that. And uh, I will see you soon with some more advanced C++, which is actually just math world.